Thank you for joining us here on the National Communications Network. My name is Shaquan Gill, and of course, we bring you live updates on important issues ongoing here in Guyana. With me in studio, I have two distinguished teachers um, who, of course, will be sharing with me their thoughts on a number of uh, new initiatives and mechanisms implemented in the Ministry of Education or through the Ministry of Education for the overall benefit of our teachers. With me, I have Mr. Sheikh Ahmad who is the principal of Essequibo Island Secondary School, Yes, sir. as well as Ms. Shandrina Welcome Lee. I hope I did a good job pronouncing that. Mm -hmm. And they're here with me to discuss these things. Now, Ms. Lee, just let me know, how long have you been in the teaching profession? Since I was 15 years old, and don't ask me my age. I won't, I won't. <laughs> Mr. Matt, how long have you been? I've been in 26 years. Mm, 26 years. Yeah. So now, uh, yesterday, I think it was, the teachers, some teachers participated in a strike action that was orchestrated by the Guyana Teachers Union. I'll start with you, Mr. Ahmad. Why didn't you strike? Well, first of all, let me say, let me say for the record that I am the son of a former headmaster who was the president of the Guyana Teachers Union. So I'm fully much of faith as it relates to trade unionism mm -hmm. and the fact where industrial action comes in. And in my career of 26 years, I have never striked regardless which government of the day was in office, I have never had reason to strike. In 2018, I didn't strike. In 2024, I'm not striking. Primarily because of a number of reasons. As a matter of fact, I consider my charges, my students, paramount importance. I have a heart for them. This is primarily the most important term before CSEC and NGSA. This is the term that students need to choose the most. And this is the term that I, as a person, can't walk away from my students. I'm results-oriented as a teacher, as a head teacher, as a school administrator. Because the bragging rights in this country for schools is based on how good you perform at CSEC. And Eskimo Island Secondary has been doing a good job. One of our students lately, Top Cape, now raised Jack Nanan. Yeah. The fact remains that we have struggled through COVID. This is post-COVID era, and we are working. That's primarily the first reason. The second reason is that when I looked at the interventions, as it relates to my salary, my allowances, and so, in 2019, I was getting a salary, a net salary take home of 168,000, right? In 2024, my net take home is 259, right? The fact of the matter is, comparing my June, my November 2023 20, salary, which was 217,000, and my January 2024 salary, which is 259,000, an increase of over 42,000, right? And if I put that 42,000 as a percentage of my 218, it meant my salary has increased about 189 close to 19%. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's the largest single increase in my entire career that I have gotten as a teacher. Now, I would be ungrateful to walk away from my classroom having got such a large increase. The third thing is that you have to weigh the credibility of your union and you have to look at the direction in which they're going. It is in my firm belief, the credibility, they are inverted commas, as it relates to union leadership, union direction. Because I'm saying from 2020 to the end of 2022, we were in deep COVID. The only people that came to us, reached out to us, was the Ministry of Education. The Minister of Education had several interventions for us so that we survived that period. We never one day saw the union. We never one day saw them with a mask, a cleaning agent, or anything. They are our union. We pay them $700 per month, right? And if you have 12,000 teachers in this country, it means that they are getting $8.4 million a month, right? At the end of the year, they're getting $100 million. They have never told us what they are doing with their money. I am not bemoaning the fact that teachers have a reason, a right to strike. But teachers also have a right to work. 
And if I choose to work, if my staff choose to work, and we choose to work based on weighing the pros and cons, right? We found that society needed us. Community needed us. Imagine you as a father, and you have your kid writing NGSC or CSEC. And this is the final lap of the race. And we are walking away from your kid. In education, according to the United Nations, during COVID, lost time is hard to regain. We have had a system where we are trying to recoup. We are still trying to address the deficiencies of the COVID era in the education system. And the Ministry of Education has been doing a tremendous job in providing us with the necessary tools to do that. And you can see from our external performances, Guyana's external performances, schools' external performances, there has been a general upliftment of the sector. And the investment is paying great dividends. So the fact of the matter is, your net increase is good, 19% for, for us teachers in the senior bracket, the graduates. And it's not the graduates alone got the net increase. The TQMs, their salaries were adjusted. They were being paid salaries for, for the year before. They got a total increase in 2023 of 11%. The assistant, master, or mistress, right? They got a 12% increase when you put the figures on the table. Because I have taught maths for 20 years mm -hmm. as a secondary school teacher. So figures is not something that can play with me. I know my percentage is good, right? And we, at our school, we take students with zero at NGSA. And you look at the end product after five years, they pass, right? And we work wholeheartedly for that. The thing is, the passion of the job. And then my father, who was a former president of the union, always says, it's important to us to have a conversation. Let's have a conversation. Let's have a discussion. Let's be realistic as human beings. We can't walk away from kids. We can't walk away from a classroom. Because when this is over, everybody's going back to the classrooms. How much did we gain in 2018? There's been a big issue of the $8,000 school uniform allowance. But was that addressed in the 2018 strike and the solutions? No, it wasn't. So why bring it up here? If you can, if you can address the $8,000 in 2018, how you feel? How you bring it as an issue in 2024? We recognize that there needs to be an increase in the uniform allowance. But GTU's issue is that they need to speak to teachers. You need to go out to the grassroots level, go into the classrooms. Some of them have been executives so, for so many years, they have forgotten what the classroom looked like, right? You got to go to the classroom. You got to speak to the teachers. You got to understand how teachers feel, right? This thing is not a top-heavy approach. You got to go from the grassroots level. Look at what's happening with college and CPCE and the amount of graduates that are being Produce from college without signing contracts for the first time in history. Right? That's kudos to the Ministry of Education. What they're doing. You're not binding anybody to, to, to sign a contract for three years. We're training you to go out there to work, to contribute, to develop. Because we all know that we want people to stop being poor in the world. And the tool for people to stop being poor in the world is education. And I have prime examples of that in my locality where I live. A lot of people has gone to things. So all of those factors have weighed on the mind. And a human being has to sit and think carefully. How many people am I going to hurt when I strike? I'm going to hurt a whole school if I strike. I'm going to hurt 200 parents. I'm going to hurt 200 kids. I'm going to hurt all these people. They are going to be in tears. Students are, not, are, are going to be frustrated. I have, I have a conscience. And I can't live like that. Yeah, yeah. Right? Miss, Miss Lee, if you can share with us your thoughts. Why didn't you strike uh, uh, just a few days ago? I don't do anything I don't believe in. So if I don't believe in it or I don't see a good reason for it, I'm not going to do it. 
if I see a good reason for it, I, I'm going to do it. So I didn't strike because I don't believe in this, this strike. Yes, we have grounds, we have issues. Um, there are things that need to be improved always. Mm. And I need to emphasize that. Yeah. Nothing is ever perfect. Life itself is not perfect. There, but you have, you cannot deny the fact that there has been improvement. They have, the Ministry of Education, our current Minister of Education, and our CEO, they have done so much for the time they've been in office for this tenure to help education and to help teachers. Specifically, since my colleague spoke about a, a number of issues, I'd like to zoom in on the grant, sure. the cash grant. Our classrooms are enhanced and the delivery of education has been en enhanced because of the cash grant. Teachers were able to purchase the materials they need to help with their classrooms. Now, um, I don't, this, I'm seeing a lot of back and forth and um, teachers attacking other teachers. It looks like we are fighting among ourselves in terms of us attacking each other. Mm -hmm. But this is a matter of personal choice. If you feel like striking, I'm, I'm, I don't have a problem with you doing that. But when I say I'm not striking, you shouldn't have a problem with it either. Yeah. Because I am a free thinking human being. I have a brain of my own and I will make decisions for myself. And my, my teachers at the Bishop's High School are a bunch of brilliant people. I have great respect for them. And many of them, almost all of them, have chosen not to strike and nobody pressured them into it. It's their choice. So what I'm seeing, and I'm seeing a lot of things on the internet, and I'm seeing the comparison in terms of classroom and all of that. Now, now policies are in place to help with so many things. For example, there is the policy, the PTA put in place with, um, the, PT, the, the Ministry of Education put in place concerning PTAs, alumni, and all of that. As an administrator, you need to be able to tap in to all those things put in place to help your school, yeah. right? So the Ministry of Education, and I think no ministry and no government at any time will be able to give you everything that you need. At no time will they be able to. But the mere fact that this Ministry of Education, this minister, this CEO, is doing so much. The two deputies we have in school to help to reduce the, the workload mm -hmm. of teachers the extra teachers in school, the reduction in periods and all of that, and the production of, I would say, the production of teachers to fill those gaps so that we can reduce the periods for other teachers. It has enhanced the delivery of education. I cannot sit and stifle my conscience and say things haven't improved. They have. And I think there's a better way to do, to do it, right? I think there's a better way to do it. Indeed. Mr. Ahmad, a number of things were implemented. I believe just about 21 or 25 or 4 to 1 um, requests made by the GTU were implemented by the Ministry of Education. Um, you know some of these things and we spoke about it a bit earlier. Share with us how you think these things have been able to help teachers in executing their duties. Well, well, I'll, I'll, I'll start with the index card, right? I felt as a teacher and even an administrator that that was a redundant piece of thing to do, right? You had this, this was a piece of record that you were doing, and there were several other pieces of record that you could actually have the same information. Yeah. Right? And that was a blessing. Now, to backtrack a bit, when I became a head teacher in 2016, it was 114 records, right? Mm -hmm. And you got to spend your time as an administrator trying to get 114 records in place to satisfy an inspectorate team, to satisfy a METS team. Right? And you don't get time to run your school. Right? The simplification of reporting. The simplification of records. Right now we do an online HM report. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. EMIS is on stream. All registers are marked online. Right? Now we are removing a lot of record-oriented system. We are, we, are, we are cutting these records. Mm -hmm. Schemes. Daily lesson plan. You could imagine teachers writing lesson plan, lunch time, break time, night time, early morning. Because what? You want to be in line. Because the code said if you don't have a lesson plan, 
you, you're in breach of yes. policy mm -hmm. and serious breach you could be taken to the TSC now our CEO came comes in and he recognizes because he comes from the classroom so he says to the education hierarchy and the government to the minister who listens who always listens right he says look we need to remove this weekly we, daily lesson plan let's have a weekly lesson plan let's give the teachers the the time to deliver in the classrooms let's not have them planning and they will spend 75 percent of the time planning and they're not delivering the fact remains that this government has come up with one of the most the best idea give schools money there's no standardization in what schools buy because as my colleague from bishops and i'm from escape islands we have different needs right our school our classrooms our teachers all have different needs and this was one of the most brilliant ideas that they have come up with to give school the funding i say look you buy what your school needs produce results we want results this is what you're going to do you're going to buy what your teacher wants teachers are going to buy what they want right you're going to coordinate this is this is not a pta thing this is a school's thing yeah. right this thing is managed by the school so you have a system now where we're trying to remove the burden from the teachers getting the materials from the parents providing in the materials from corporate Guyana providing the materials from the, gov the government is saying look we take this responsibility we're going to do this mm -hmm. right and that takes the burden away the teacher is free to deliver students learn better with more materials right you could put in audio visual equipment you put in whiteboards you put in you know you have all these things that you buy mm -hmm. play doh and all these things you know you enhance the delivery of curriculum when you have finance in the system yeah. i don't have to worry where i get finances then look at the fact because we care cash grant that was re-implemented by this government right and who benefits the kids benefit kids are coming to school properly dressed right and our ministry has gone step further in the primary schools they give them breakfast or they get hot lunches even in the hinterland the secondary schools get hot, hot lunches right so we want students who are nutritionally better right who are well equipped with all the materials teachers are well equipped we don't want teachers to be writing records all day 114 we we, we reduce that right miss yeah. we reduce that and and teachers are happy because they don't have to do all these things and then the next thing paper-based records ceo says hey look teachers have computers school have internet facility right and most of the things are done online most of the storage are in cloud storage or whatever right so the whole system has evolved making it easier for us to operate in the classroom a lot of the things that the ministry has done to improve the lives of teachers in the classroom was not brought up by the gtu the gtu didn't bring this to the table the ministry recognizes these things because the people who are managing the ministry now were once in the classrooms so once you had the experience in the classroom you know what affected you in the classroom and you know what you need to change so you know the interventions have been a lot yeah. look i've been to school in the 80s right in my school days in the 80s it was teacher me chalk and blackboard right those are look at the resources look at the investment in textbooks all all students in primary and secondary schools have textbook look at the improvement in exercise books right the fact remains is that <clears throat> you're having money to buy even pens for us to mark the books right we, we we keep investing in education why because the best countries in the in the world are the countries that have the best education systems right and that is why we have to think twice before we decide to pull our teachers away from the classroom and suffer the nation because at the growth rate of this country we cannot afford to have our kids outside of the classroom that is why our education minister took took the risk and put us back in 2022 fully in the classrooms we, we are one of the first countries in the world 
who went back to the classrooms faster than a lot of countries, right? We took the risk and we were there, right? And you can see from the results, there have been improvements in all schools. You know, and the thing is, the distribution of resources is very important for any education system. Mm -hmm. And you find that there is, there is a strive, we, we're striving right now to have equality of resources in our schools. And I can say safely say from our school in 20, and if you listen to Naresh's interview, Naresh said he could only have written 11 subjects then because only 11 was available. Right now with all the resources and everything, our small school is writing 23, oh. right? Mm -hmm. So we have made strides. The education has made strides, yeah. right? Packages are going to come. We, we, like Miss, I'm saying that all is not, all will never be well. No system is going to be perfect. perfect. Nobody's going to be, I'm not going to be the perfect HM. Miss is not going to be the perfect HM. Mm -hmm. But we strive for perfection. Mm -hmm. That is what we strive for, perfection. Yeah. Miss, I saw in this list an open day policy and a number of other things. Any other thing you wanted to add that you think benefited directly the teachers as well in this list? Oh, besides, the lesson plan was a great, I know my colleagues spoke about it, but that was a great um, effort. That was a great initiative, the removal from the daily to the uh, weekly. And uh, I was scrolling on Facebook and, and some teachers were asking, it seems as though some people don't know. Some teachers, they're not aware. And there's a circular out there that says that we remove, that we don't have to write the daily lesson plans anymore, the weekly. So I'm not sure where the disparity is. Mm -hmm. Um, but and, and these circulars have been sent out soft copy and you know it's all over the, the, the internet so I'm not sure what's happening mm -hmm. the lesson plan the cash grant the in the re reduction of um, teaching periods the second deputy the second SM uh, those are things that directly help the teachers and mm -hmm. would help to make their jobs easier in in the classrooms right so uh, and the um, EMIS is program the the internet the the upgrade of um labs the upgrade of labs the upgrade of it rooms and the computers and all that mm. you know it we, we have we we've benefited a lot and i'm not talking about just the bishop's high school i'm speaking about generally, 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 generally. right for all schools and we appreciate i i appreciate the, the 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 changes and the advancement and everything and one of the things i admire the most about the minister and on our ceo is that they they connect with the teachers on the ground they know what what is needed and they try their best to and they have been listening to gtu too they have been listening to gtu because i remember last year um at a head teachers meeting the president of the gtu was at the meeting and he listed some of the things that were done by the ministry and he said those are things that they proposed so they some of the things they proposed are implemented some of the things that ministry see themselves mm -hmm. that they think need to be done or that teachers would have said they need and they gave it to us they listen our minister she listens right and she tries her best and i admire that i admire that and i think we will get a far way as um a system and education is advancing and we're moving forward we're getting there it's a pity that more persons aren't on board yeah. As we wrap up our conversation, teachers, um, I just want to give you the opportunity to give some brief closing remarks um, on, on everything that we've spoken about that you'd like to say. I'll start with you, Mr. Matt, and then well, I'll have Ms. Lee. I would like to close in saying that I hope that better sense can prevail. I hope that we can have a conversation. The fact remains is that when all of this is said and done, right, we are going to have to be in the same working environment. We have to be in the same classrooms. We have to work with each other, right? So the thing is, in my opinion, the talks didn't break down. We should have not have gone to this stage where we're pulling teachers out of the classroom. This is not a necessity at this point in time, right? We want the system to grow. And as the system grow, our human resources are going to grow because this government is doing a tremendous job when it comes to education. Our minister is working overtime. Our office is working overtime. And as Miss said, the ministry is not connected to the departments of education. The ministry is connected to all schools. 
The CEO is connected to every single school. The CEO is accessible by all teachers. The minister is accessible by any teacher. Right? It, there's a system where management is from the grassroots level. Right? And we, we need to have the conversation where, listen, everything is not equal at this point in time. But we have got to strive to make it equal. Rather than we being on the road, we could be in the classroom and still have this conversation. Right? So I appeal to the teachers. Let's go back to our classrooms. Let's let the GTU and the ministry continue to negotiate, continue to talk. Right? And let them finish those negotiations, right? In the best interest of the parents, the children, the teachers, and the Guyanese people as a whole. It must be a holistic approach, right? We have a president who intervenes, who, who, who speaks to us, right? Who speaks directly to us, who visits our communities, he assesses our need, he assesses his government impacts, and he understands where we are. The fact of the matter is, interventions were made. And if interventions were made, we are better. People look at our faces and say, happy faces, right? But all of us are happy. All of us are smiling, right? Because we can do better, right? The effort is there, we can do better. And Guyana has shown in the years 2020, 2022, that teachers were willing to do whatever it takes to produce the results, right? It therefore means, let's continue to talk. Let's continue to have the dialogue. Remove the animosity, right? Remove the, 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 the things that we say about each other, right? Let us work for the betterment of the people of this country and the general improvement of children so that when we retire and we go away into the the, 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 we, as we move away, we can always reflect and we can always see that we were part of a system that made the difference in a lot of people's lives. Yeah. Yeah. My, I, I would say I would like to advise us as educators, teachers, let us stop attacking each other. I saw a young college teacher um, on Facebook. She was talking about the cash grant and how it benefited her. And I could relate. Mm -hmm. I remembered when I was in college, I know what it is like to have to find the resources. I could relate to what she was saying. But many persons in the comments section were attacking her, laughing at her, um, gaslighting her, and all of that. We don't need that. We are intelligent human beings. We are the educators. We mold the nation. We educate the nation. We need to operate in that capacity. We need to stop attacking each other and we need to operate at a higher level. We, we, if, we, if we have a disagreement, let it be on policy. Don't let it be personal and come down to the individual okay. and, and, and how they look and what they... Another teacher I heard had on a quote and she was criticized severely. And, uh, that, that's just petty. Yeah. Right? And I think we need to set the example because we are, tr we are teaching children and we demand a standard from them. And as such, we need to emulate that standard to them because when we are finished, what are we going to say to them? Why, what would be our explanation for our behavior? Towards each other, towards each other. And when I say each other, towards teachers. Teachers are pressuring other teachers and by talking to other teachers because they do not think the same way as you do. Mm. We are not supposed to think the same way. This is not a hard mentality thing. We are individual persons and we need to be allowed to be ourselves and be or exhibit our individuality without being criticized. So my 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 I would implore that we stop attacking each other. Teachers have a right whoever want to go out that's your choice. Whoever wants to stay stay in and teach the children because of their own reason that's their choice let's stop attacking each other let's deal with issues instead of personalities and that's what that's that would be my final thing miss lee and mr amari i want to thank you so much for spending the last few minutes with me detailing discussing breaking down this issue in the way that you did i can tell that you both are really really professional and decent teachers thank you so much thank for you for spending much. this time with me
You're, You're welcome. welcome. You've heard Anything. you've heard from the principals of the Essequibo Island Secondary School as well as the Bishop's High School sharing their thoughts on all that is going on in the education sector. With that being said, my name is Shaquan Gill and I'm saying goodbye for now.